Let's do a problem from section 8-4 where we're doing a hypothesis test for a mean and sigma is known. You should always check the requirements before doing a hypothesis test to make sure that uh, you have all the requirements satisfied. Uh, we want to assume that we have a sample that is simple and random. We want to make sure that sigma is in fact known for our problem and we want one of these two conditions or both to be satisfied that the population is normally distributed or we have a large enough sample of 30 or more. This is the formula for our test statistic. We're actually not going to use this formula because we're just going to rely on our calculator but should you need that formula here it goes. So our first step is to identify our claim. Now if we just read through this uh, statement, the problem, we can identify the claim. So uh, if we take a look at it carefully, we see that uh, tests for older baseballs, when dropped 22 feet from the concrete surface, they bounce an average of uh, 238.9 centimeters. Now we've tested 50 new baseballs, they bounce the height uh, that had a mean of 234.9 centimeters. Here is where we assume the standard deviation of bounce heights of all new baseballs is 3, uh, 4.3 centimeters. They want us to use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim. Here we go, test the claim that the new baseballs have a bounce height with a mean different from uh, 238.9 centimeters. So that is going to be our claim right there. Um, the new baseballs have bounce heights with a mean different from 238.9 centimeters. Now we want to state that in mathematical terms and so in mathematical terms um, the mean for the population is mu and it's different from um, 238.9 and the units aren't really necessary here but we'll just put them on anyways uh, 238.9 centimeters. Now the opposite of this claim will essentially be the same thing except we will have an equal sign and between the null and alternative hypothesis the one with the equal sign has a condition of equality and should be the null hypothesis and the other one is going to be the alternative. And just for good measure, we should actually label it label it as the claim. I'll get there. All right, so next step is uh, we want to identify our alpha. And our significance level is uh, given to us here at 0 0.01. Uh, the next step, we want to identify all the possible statistics that we'll need. Looks like we'll need x bar, mu, sigma, and n. So x bar um, x bar was given to us and that was equal to uh, the 50 new baseballs that's uh, 234.9 centimeters our standard deviation was also given to us. Actually, 
we don't need the standard deviation. Uh, we actually need to provide uh, the population standard deviation since we're assuming that. So our sigma in this case is going to be 4.3 centimeters. And then the number of baseballs that we're looking at, that we're testing in, is equal to 50. So instead of using this formula to get our test statistic, what we're going to do is we're going to um, just punch it in our calculators. So let's get our calculators out and punch some values in. We're going to go to stat, test, and this is uh, the case where we're doing a hypothesis test on a Z distribution with only one variable. So we're going to look at the Z test. We have statistics. Our mu is 230. 8.9 our sigma is 3.9 sorry 4.3 our x bar is uh, 234.9 we have uh, 50 baseballs that we're testing and this option is our alternative hypothesis Uh, which is selected and so we just need to have it calculate for us so let's see if we can some of these values. What we really want is, um, uh, depending on what we're going for, we could have uh, a test statistic, we can report our test statistic, um, or we can uh, find our p-value. In this case we have both these pieces of information here. So our test statistic is a z-value, so that's uh, Z equals uh, it's a negative six point five six point five seven seven so let's call it seven eight they usually want it rounded up to um, to two decimal places our p value if needed is going to be a four point eight uh, 0 times uh, 10 to the negative 11th power which is going to be a really small number so if we were using a um, if we were using the <coughs> the traditional method which I think this problem is going to ask us to do uh, we would draw our graph and we would need to find our, our some of our points uh, critical values so let's go back to the calculator real quick and just quickly run through uh, the test again. And all our values are still there. Um, and then this time I'm going to ask the calculator to draw the graph for me. So I can have a nice bell-shaped curve. So it's going to give me uh, my z-value. And it says the p-value is ac actually 0, but it's, it's, it's not exactly 0. It's a really, really small number. So let's see. Let's take a, a snippet of this. And uh, in doing so, what we're going to be interested in is, um, let's see if I can paste it on here. Uh, what we're going to be interested in is identifying our, our, our critical values. So at the 0.01 level, our critical values would go, um, let's see, it would go somewhere over here, probably, or maybe a little bit more. Uh, but we can find them. Uh, this is a two-tail test. 
so we know that we're going to shade in the values over here in our tail, a two tail because of the alternative hypothesis. And um, our test statistic is negative 6.57, so it's going to be probably in the critical region, but we should double check and find our critical values here. So we're going to get two critical values. One of them is going to be a negative. The other one is going to be the exact same, but the positive. And the way we can do that is uh, we can take our calculators and do the second and distribution. So we're doing the inverse norm. And we're looking at the area to the left. So if we focus on this negative one, we have uh, our alpha is 0.01. But because it's a two-tail, it gets cut in half. So let's divide that by two. So an inverse norm will give us a negative 2.575 or 576. Uh, again, usually they want this in two decimal places, so let's call it two point, uh, negative 2.58. So negative 2.58, 2.58. And so clearly your test statistic, your z, is going to be in the critical region. So that's enough for us to make a conclusion. Since uh, the test statistic is in the critical region, and if you want to, you know, kind of specify that negative six point five eight is less than negative two point five eight we can say that uh, we reject the null hypothesis. So in rejecting the null hypothesis, um, we come up with a table. And the table that we have will um, The table that we have um, will run us through a a flow chart, and it's going to ask us if we if the original claim has a condition of equality, and we say no, and then it's going to ask us if we rejected the null hypothesis, and we say yes. So after going through the flow chart, we can we can follow the flow chart and see that the phrase that you're going to use is that the sample data support the claim that and then the actual claim was this first statement that we came up with so we can just copy and paste that and this is the end of our hypothesis test so let's check our answer uh, this is the actual problem that we were looking at it's asking us uh, what are the null and alternative hypotheses so the null hypothesis has the equal sign and the alternative has the not equal sign so I think that would be A. What is our, the value of our test statistic? Our test statistic is negative uh, 6.58. Uh, our critical value, we found our critical value in our calculator which is, uh, there's two of them since it is a two-tail, so it's a negative um, 2.58 and then comma positive 2.58. And then in the end, we ended up rejecting the null hypothesis, and we say there is uh, sufficient evidence to support the claim that the baseballs are different. So let's just uh, check that and we got it correct. So this is an example where we were doing a hypothesis test for a mean and the sample, or I'm sorry, the population standard deviation sigma was known.